evening. Pastor Tammy is still typing them. I, I had to go so far back that I had to get the hard copies out. I had taught it to so long, or I had nothing digital for it. But they were showing their age. They had to be updated. So we were working on getting that done. Had some things hinder us getting here. It's kind of getting to be a regular thing. The enemy doesn't want Broken Chance Church moving forward, but I read the book and he loses. So, well, I would ask Josiah, but he's still getting over his stuff. Y'all keep praying for him. He's had it for a week or so. So, Nehemiah, will you grab the offering plate? The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Does anybody have a testimony tonight? I'm thankful to be here and that God is with me and faithful. Amen. Brother Don. I did hear another cut on my arm the second time I tried to take the cancer. Second time I Cancer free. Praise God. Thankful for his word. Um, Brother Robert. I see the Lord has uh, continued to provide for me. Um, and I've got healing from a severe wound on my head and uh, a church far away uh, bandaged it up. And I think there was some healing derived from prayer and that's a, that is true uh, god can uh it said it, it, people won't all all the way to heal sometimes god said if you will you will be healed so it could be like uh, an eventual thing happening god takes his time and i want to ask for healing it because when god said his time i will do all things not in the time i request and that's 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 what i have to say for this Amen. God is the healer. Past tense is already finished at the cross. Sometimes we do have to resist those slewfoot. I just want to say I'm very grateful for good friends. I'm grateful for good friends. Good friends. Amen. Amen. Praise <laughs> God. Thankful Jesus is my friend. Amen. Amen. Anybody else this evening? We're getting the schedule together. You can sit in a chair. You can help out. So just be remembering we'll be here 11 days from pretty much morning till late evening. So plenty of time to go around to support your church. Amen. Uh, it's tithes and offerings, so... I guess now's a good time to tell you that 10% ain't just your finances. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. So, uh, let's see. Uh, how many hours are in a week? <laughs> 24 in a day. So, 24 times 7. We'll just do some quick math for you. 24 times 7 is 168 divided by 10. That means uh, just 17 hours is all we need from you each week during the fair. I didn't write it. I'm just educating you. Yeah, it's less than a work week. As long as you can take the money from there. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I got to stall so the papers get out of here so you get all of this, you know. So, sing a song. You don't want to hear me sing a song. But, but uh, we're going to uh, be talking and doing some learning tonight about prayer. And uh, 
you know, that we're not going, there's no way we could possibly dissect all the types of prayer tonight, but we're going to look at a general consensus of it. And uh, I mean, there's things that God tells us to pray in faith. That you just pray one time and done. I mean, oh, that he said, by your his stripes you were healed. When you pray for healing, you don't have to beg for it, right? But I mean, oh, there's other things in the Bible that they prayed continually on. Some of those things are you have to be a little persistent about. You know, when you're talking about praying for your nation, talking about praying for those principalities, spiritual weakness, high places, being watchmen, like I talked about on Sunday. Sometimes it's you got to pray until you get that uh, that pop full in heaven, for lack of better terms for you, till it pours out upon the throne. But if you don't know the difference between how to pray and what to pray about, you know, he said, don't think about what to eat, what to wear, or where you're going to live. He takes care of the birds of the air. How much more is he going to take care of you? And if any every believer has probably spent some wasted time when you first became a believer praying for those things before you learned to trust God for those things. Amen. But when you learned to trust God and you started doing your part, you realize that freed him up to do his part. Amen. 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 And so now. What about, you know, when you pray for principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and high places, when you pray in faith, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, it should be done, right? But the Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee, right? But how many know sometimes he's an idiot and he comes back? And you have to, when the Bible says you've done all you can do, now what were you doing? You were praying and standing in faith of who God is and who His Word says. When you've done all you can do, stand. And how do you stand? How do you fight? Then you pray. You make your petition known to God and you remind Him of His Word. But we're going to look at tonight when she gets it down here, and some of this I taught 15 years ago, and some of you will go, oh, I remember that. And we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer here in a little while. And how many know God didn't leave you to wonder about how to pray? He laid it out there, told you how, and there's ways that you do that. But uh, if you go to, uh, I touched on this Sunday, if you have your Bible, you can go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles seven fourteen said if my people which are called by my name Well, let's just go back on that. In case you don't know what's going on here. These people were making their petitions known to God. They had got into a little bit of a crisis. And they had started petitioning God. And if you look and see, they'd made all kinds of sacrifices. And uh, the fire came down and they licked it all up. And it's talking about how his mercy endured forever. And then it says in verse 9, it says on the Eighth day, they made a solemn assembly where they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seven months, he sent his people away into the tents, glad and merry in heart, the goodness of the Lord, and showed him the day of the solemn to his people. So they were at it for a little while, 
before they got the Lord's attention. Now, I'm all about faith, if you haven't known. I'm all about praying, and I believe I don't have to beg God when I pray. And I believe there's things I can pray one time, and He hears me, he, he, he hears me and things have been released. In my faith, I stand until it happens. And then there's some other things that we're going to look at a little more that being a watchman that you have to learn to be persistent on. But if you don't know how to be persistent, if you don't know how to pray, how many of you, do, by the way, if you're just learning, when you start praying to God, you just talk to Him, like I said Sunday, like He's your best friend. But there's ways to enter in. How many know that you could have a letter and you could write the most detailed letter in the world, but if you fail to get it in the mailbox, it's never going to get to its source. Right. And a lot of people have gotten really good at making flowery things, but they never actually get it in the mailbox. He said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We start by, how many know God doesn't have a big head? He doesn't, he doesn't need our worship, but when we worship Him, it starts opening the door. It's the grease that lubes the door that starts opening it up. Amen? Amen. And so, but when if somebody just showed up and walked in here and just said, I need this, this, and this from you, didn't say hi, I didn't ask you how you were doing, just said, I need this, this, and this right now. I was expecting it last Thursday. Give it to me today. <laughs> you would go, excuse me? Do you think that our Heavenly Father is any different? When your kids show up and want something from you, and maybe that's what they showed up, but you know, they let you at least like them to do the decency of acting like they want to see you. And that they actually want to spend some time with you. You know, at least let them butter you up some before they hit you up for it. Right? Do you, do you think it's any different when God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord. I love you. You're so worthy to be praised. High and lifted up. You know, if you just show up in your laundry every morning, I've got my laundry list. Are you ready? You're not going to get what you you may be you may be sending your letter, but it's not going to make it in the mailbox. You didn't even get the door open, really. And which I don't have really all the time to teach about it tonight. But if it's things that you're not some things like I said, you're not supposed to pray. Well, how am I supposed to know that? Well, you need to start studying, and maybe we're going to go on this a little more. But if it's he said, don't think about what you're going to eat, what you want to wear, where you're going to live. If he takes care of the birds of the air, how much more is he going to take care of you? Can I have one of those? Thank you. And uh, how much more is he going to take care of you? Right? Now, did he say, don't worry about the new Mercedes? <laughs> how many people have you seen, don't raise your hand, but applying their faith for their new jets, their new cars, and new suits and new million dollar paying jobs. How I many you know God never told us to exert our faith for those things? And matter of fact, he said, don't lay up treasures upon this earth, lay up your treasures in heaven where it don't rust or do away with. Now is God, is God, now did God say that rich people wouldn't enter heaven? No, he did say it'd be easier for a, a, a needle to go through a camel back, I'm paraphrasing, you know, than than that, but rich people can make heaven. They just have to make sure they're serving God and not them, because God needs money to to accomplish the things He wants to do upon the face of the earth. It just that money can't be their God, right? So, Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. We've seen that they had been there for a little while. I said, if my people which by called by my name shall humble themselves and what? Pray. Pray. Make a petition. Remind me of my spoken word. 
Now listen, is God bound by your thoughts? Would he be bound by my flowery words just because I'm pastor? No. He's bound by the word of God. If you want God to answer prayer, you pray the word. <coughs> now, there's another key thing in front of this. How does verse 14 start? Yeah. If what? My people. Now, called by whose name? His name. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Nisi. Did it say any Joe Blow can make this petition and I will honor it? No. No, it says you've got to be a king's kid. Your name has to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I tried praying one time and God didn't hear me. Well, you know what? It rains on the just and the unjust. Maybe he'll hear you, maybe he won't. You want him to hear you? Be one of his kids. Now you've got a covenant with him. Now he promises, if my people who are called by my name, you got God, you get, you know, do you have this Jesus stamp on you? Has his blood been, been applied to your name? If it has, it says, but it even goes on that. It didn't just say even any of my people. It says those that humble themselves. Those that realize that they can't do anything without me. And if I don't honor my word, certain things aren't going to happen. Right? It says humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Now when you seek something, that means you can't have anything else in front of you. Do you know that with the enemy has made a world today that we live in that has more distractions than there's ever been upon the face of the earth? Right now, you can jump on your phone and you'll be so distracted you would not hear me the rest of this evening. You could just turn on Facebook and your mind could go 20 different directions. Right? And nobody in here, myself included, is above it. Has, any, has anybody noticed that you, you, your time is fought for every second of the day and everything that you're doing? And the only way that you're going to seek God is if you start making a conscious choice to do so. Prayer never just happens. It never makes time for itself. You have to make time for it. And you have to start shutting yourself in and shutting off distractions. That's what it means to seek God. Does it come naturally? If you did a tally today, would you ever have enough time to pray? Don't answer that. You might incriminate yourself. But you're going to have to learn to set time aside. Now, does that mean you, you become like a monk and you sit there, you know, and just, I'm not even going to do one of them stupid chants because that's not how my father works. But it does mean you need, for as much as you're talking to him, you need to give him that much time to talk to you. Whatever it is. Maybe you give five minutes of seeking his face when you start. Ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Maybe you start with two minutes. <laughs> I think when I started, I was happy to get 30 seconds in the beginning. If I'm being honest. Come on, don't be acting like some of you ain't there or haven't been there. You know, let's, you know, let's be real. If we want to grow, you got to own up to it, right? Amen. And so, if my people have called, uh, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. Now, wait a minute. I thought he said my, he only heard my people, his people. Now he's saying wicked ways. That Does that mean you can have wicked stuff in you and still be his? Absolutely. You can have some trash in your heart. But if you seek his face, that light starts exposing your trash. And either you can repent and turn from it and clear up the channels. Or you can try to hide it. And then you're just burying yourself more because repentance is the gateway to freedom. But the more you seek his face, the more his light will start uh, illuminating. Uh, sometimes it feels unfortunate. Some of your wicked ways. But that is how you start cleaning up the prayer channel. Amen. Do you all see where I'm going tonight? Yes. 
And I may not get too far on this, but I can see wheels clicking tonight already. And maybe some of it's old hat. But how many you know old hat? Sometimes, how many of the Bible even talks about digging the furrow ground again? Right. How many believes that we, we've had a million prayer movements, but how many believe that we all need a new prayer movement in our own lives? Right. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not looking for some showy thing for the whole world. I'm looking for it inside me. I'm talking about me right now. Not even you, me. I'm looking to dig some new furrows, get some new water. Come on, don't that sound good? I'm getting excited just talking about it. I can feel the Lord moving. Woo! Ah. Kind of needed that, Lord. Woo, glory. <laughs> so, wicked ways, he said, Then I will hear from heaven. Up until that point, he's not heard you. Against popular belief. Now there's certain things he's going to take care of. There's certain things he's bound by his word. But we're talking about God actually hearing us and moving. Now, it rains on the just and unjust. Could you pop one off and get one through? Absolutely, it's possible. But how many want sure things with God? Amen. How many want to know when you pray, you know you're you know heaven hears you. How many know you've been, you've been around people that you know when your world's upside down, you know who you want to ring the phone to because you know when they pray, something's going to happen because they've kept their channel clear. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and to be honest with you, that's one of my jobs as pastor and sometimes the devil makes it, tries to make it a hundred times hard to get my channel clogged up so that I can't have that and I got to work overtime in case you just didn't know. Just being real with you. Amen. And I will forgive their sin and heal their land. How many know our land needs healing? And it, it's going to keep getting rougher out there, but man, come on. Isn't it time that the light starts overtaking the darkness? Right. Perfect light casts out all darkness, right? Yeah. It's time to go from the back seat to the front seat. And I'm not, I, I have, and I know I, I, sometimes I'm like, I hear myself and I'm like, man, that sounds awful hard, Pastor Brian. But I'm tired. Of, I've seen, as a man of God, I've seen five million movements rise and fall since I've been in the ministry. I've seen this happen and that. I'm tired of all the next thing and that thing. I'm just ready for real men and women of God who decide to get out and just start walking this thing out and start turning the world upside down day by day in their personal life. I don't have to have, uh, I don't have to set up 20 inflatable tubs and baptize 300 people at the capital that them people never know what happened to them. Nobody ever discipled them. Nobody ever went nowhere with them. Nobody ever followed up with them. And then none of those people are still serving God to make it look like I did something for God. I would rather have each one of you start discipling somebody in your own life. Start raising them up. Start praying for them. Start taking authority in your neighborhood and in your family and start seeing your families get saved and, and, and your city get saved and one by one start turning the world upside down and have fruit that's lasting. That is true revival. Amen? Amen. But it starts with prayer. And prayer starts with letting, making sure he's hearing us. How many is like me and think you could dig out some of your sister in tonight? You can see where I need to dig on the old sister in a little bit. Make sure I'm getting the channel tuned in just right. Amen. I said me. I threw me at myself in there. I'm with you. Come on. So they were they, they become persistent in prayer. And Hannah in uh, Luke chapter two verse thirty seven, uh, she became very persistent in prayer. Luke eighteen one through eight, they become persistent in prayer. Uh, James five sixteen through eighteen, it says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Now, I've quoted a bunch of verses to you. I'll give them back to you real fast. Matthew 17, uh, 21, Matthew 21, uh, 22, Luke 2, 
37 and Luke 18, 1 through 8. Luke 18, 1 through 8. Luke 2, uh, 37. Uh, Matthew 17, 21. Matthew 21, uh, verse 22. And James 5, 16 through 18. There's you a whole box to study at home. But I want to go back to the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See, when you get your channel cleared out, he says that prayer, something happens. Now, I'm going to be real open and honest. We're a light crowd tonight. Not that that matters much to me either way, but it is less chance for me to cause somebody to stumble by saying this, but you know, I'm about sick and tired of all the obstacles I've been facing. And the enemy has tried to almost convince me that my prayer is not availing much anymore. But how I many know we can look around and know that's not true? And I'm not meaning that arrogantly, but I can still lay hands on you, you still get healed. Amen. How many have witnessed that over and over and over? But then, so why would he want to wear me out? Well, if he wears me out, who's, sec who's next in line? Yeah. And then if he can convince you there's something broken in me, then he starts trying to convince you that there's something broken in you. See how that works? And why would he care about the smallest church in Springfield? Because obviously we're doing something to upset his apple cart. Right. Amen. Amen. Obviously, we're already doing the things we're talking about, but we're not satisfied with status quo with broken chains. We're satisfied with going ever that much deeper into the things of God. Amen. To where our prayer availeth much. You know, I believe with the watchmen and things, we're going to start having some prayer meetings again. But if I get here and people just listen to me pray again, I'm going to start beating people. <laughs> I've warned you now. I mean, I want people to pray. Amen. Amen. I'll teach you how. I'll, I'll show you how. I'll encourage you. I want you to start doing it. If you don't do it in your prayer closet, you can never do it in a corporate body. Right. Amen. So you got to start doing your corporate body. And I'm not here beating on you because I, I, what did I say that it, I remember what I said about me just five seconds earlier praying and all that. Come on. So if you're just starting, don't lose heart. I'm just but. You know, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He didn't say the prayer of an experienced man. He didn't say the prayer of the one that's been going a Christian the longest. He said the prayer of a righteous man. Well, you know what? I'll never be righteous enough in my own strength. I'll never be good enough. There's nothing I can do to earn righteousness. But I can put on the robe of righteousness that Jesus had given me. But I also need to, holiness is not something that we talk about anymore. But holiness is that, 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 that thing that powers the anointing. Amen. It's that thing that gives power to your prayer. Right. Right. That means... Well, I need some scripture for that. Well, I just gave it to you in 2 Chronicles. He said, if you would pray and repent of your wicked ways, that he would hear your voice. You got to get the holiness in so that he can hear you, so that you, you when you pray, you can start shaking heaven. Amen. You go, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, and that thing stops talking. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. You can go, I can I, I speak healing right now. And, and listen, here's the thing. I can't make people believe that. I've, done, I've said that to countless of people through the ages, and I know, and sometimes it, it's at the altar, and I lay hands, and we go through the whole thing, and God heals them right here. And there's other times, you know, people are still learning and growing, and they'll tell me offhanded as they're going out the door. And I'll go, I, I declare healing in Jesus' name. And some of them latch on to that prayer. And they're healed right then, and some of them go, eh. And in my spirit, I feel which ones connect and which ones didn't, but my prayer was just as powerful every single time. Amen. Why? Because the Word says it is. Not because who I am, but because who the Word says I am, and He says what happens when we do that. Now, has there been times I've had to pray more than once? Yes. 
he's getting older. I'll have to stop telling this story one of these days soon. But, uh, you know, when, when Hunter was fighting for his life as a little baby, he wore me out. <laughs> I prayed nonstop for, like, weeks on end. Finally, we got the, the, the prayer bucket full, and it, it fell out, and God restored him. Amen. It's a true story. Amen. So, if you're wondering, I, I told you I went old school. Here's 25-year-old notes. So, Don't worry, none of you can read this. <laughs> and no, you can't have these. These I'm actually holding on to. You can make a copy if you want. Sometimes it does just take one prayer. That's Matthew 21, 22. You know, sometimes it takes a corporate body to pray. Acts 1, chapter 14, and 1 and 4. Acts 3, 1. They had a 3 p.m. prayer time. How many of we used to have a 3 p.m. prayer time here at the church every day? Yeah. Just somebody got so annoyed with my 3 p.m. prayers. We stopped it. Well, some of you didn't, some of you did. It's okay. But we we used to have a 3 p.m. prayer every day. We sent a text out, and uh, we had different prayers for things every day. And uh, but that because and that's why we still meet virtually every Tuesday night. It, it may not be your normal thing, and, and you know what? I, I'm so glad God didn't give us a formula that told us exactly how to do it. Because our Tuesday night prayers, even though they're virtually, they've affected and, and that God has answered a lot of prayer through that. And he still does that. And to be honest with you, like I said, when we used to have prayer meetings, they got where they weren't availing much and people's heart wasn't in them. And uh, we're here a lot. And so the one reason why we still have them virtually is because I can get you all. I can get y'all to give me thirty minutes at your house, but getting you to give up three or four hours to come here becomes something else. I'm just being honest. But every move of God has always begun with prayer, so not having prayer is not an option for me. So we have to have some kind of prayer, right? Now we're going to start having more prayer around here, even if it's one a month corporate meetings and things. But I want us to be fired up when we come. I want us to be ready to tear heaven down. Well, bring heaven down, tear hell down. All right? How many you know? Well, I got a bunch more here. How many you know sometimes you need to have some crazy faith friends and find somebody to get in agreement with you? Matthew 18, 19, Ephesians 3, 20, Mark 11, 24. Also James 5, 16 says pray for one another. Amen? Amen. So now, most of you have been here for a very long time. But in case you didn't notice, we don't have a prayer chain. I call those the gossip walls. Because nobody really wants to pray. They just want to hear the latest gossip. Our prayer chain, we, we do have a prayer group in case you aren't aware of it, that in case you can't ever reach me, you can, there is one on our Facebook page. There's a prayer group inside there. and You're free to go in there and post all you want. People will pray for you. I'll pray for you. You're free to use that if you want. If you, if you tell me I'm going to pray, I promise you, you don't have to go on big, long thing. You can just text me. And unless you give me permission, though, I won't tell another soul. That's how I am. It never, because I don't believe it should. Now, if you ask me to get the church to pray, then that's different. Y'all still with me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But you need to find somebody that can that can agree in prayer with you sometimes. Sometimes you just need a little help from your friends. How I many you know the, and everybody here how I many here there may be one or two here tonight that have never heard me preach on the crazy faith friends. Anybody ever heard that sermon? Yeah. No? One or two. Yeah. Haven't. 
The man with the the man that was sick on the bed. How many know? Some people say he didn't have any faith. How many know it takes a lot of faith to let your friends drag you to a revival meeting, and then let them haul you up on a roof, and then cut a hole in it, and go to you know if we were having a revival meeting here today, I mean this could, it would go so bad nine different ways today. For, and this place was so full that nobody could get in. Security had the doors blocked. And you were on your deathbed, and you knew that if Jesus was in the house moving, healing people, you know, it takes some real faith, friends, to get the ladder out, climb up on the roof, chop a hole in, and start letting you go down. Now, I might call the police on you before you get through. I don't know. But how I many you know you, you want friends that are, they were willing to do whatever it took to get that man to Jesus? Everybody finds himself sometime on the bed of infliction. I don't care who you are, how long you've been serving God, everybody finds himself on the bed of affliction at some time. And don't tell me that man didn't have no faith or he'd have never let him take him all the way up there and let him down. But he had some crazy faith friends that knew if they could just get him to Jesus, he'd be healed. You need people that know that if they'll, they can pray that if they can just get you to Jesus, that you'll be healed. That's the kind of people you want praying for you. Amen. Not the ones that's talking about it or trying to tell you the other uh, 20 home remedies or which doctor to go to or not go to. If you start telling me that, I'm, I promise you, I, will, I know you mean well. I know you may love me, but I won't ask you to pray for me again because you already made your mind up the moment I started telling you. Some of you are like, oh, I did that. Well, I didn't say all that. Are, are, do you see what I'm saying? So you want somebody to agree with you. That was my opener at 741. <laughs> Let's just look at our prayer outline, okay? Our Father which art in heaven. A, form a mental picture of the blood shed by Jesus on the cross. Thank God you can call him Father by the virtue of that blood. Our Father who art in heaven. So first, you need to start claiming that he's really your Father and that you can do that by the blood of Jesus. Come on, he said this is how you pray, right? Yeah. Our Father which art in heaven, so, you know, I know some people have ruined this, you know, but, you know, you, Daddy, God, all those kind of things, but I mean, no father, there's something reverent about it. And so I, I'm so thankful he's my father. And then it goes on in verse, in the second one, the second part, hallowed be thy name. How holy is your name how reverent is your name what is in the name well in the name of jesus alone every demon trembles when you see when you start recognizing we're going to look at some more here and how many remember i did a study years ago on the names of jesus and we went through hundreds of them not the names of jesus sorry the names of god and the names of jesus and so we went through hundreds of them but you need to know what's in the name because the name that you are using changes things. And the more information you have about and recognize who he is changes how you pray. How many, when you started realizing that the name of Jesus, the demons tremble, gave you a little more authority when you go, I rebuke you in Jesus' name? A, benefit one, Sin, forgiveness, sin, and deliverance from sin's dominion. So that's benefit number one is sin, forgiveness from sin, deliverance from sin's dominion. A, Jehovah, to dispute Jehovah, our righteousness. So hallowed be thy name. Jehovah, I am righteous through you, God. I can come to you because I have forgiveness for my sins because you are righteous and through you I am righteous. Jehovah M. Kadesh, Jehovah who sanctifies. 
Ooh. <laughs> was, I, you know what you did back in 1992. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but God don't remember it, and I choose not to either. I have been sanctified. I've been bought with a price. I, I am holy because my God is holy. I have been, another word for that sanctification is purification. I have been purified. That's who, see, hallowed be thy name. When you come to prayer, if you come in and your head ain't right, like I talked about Sunday, you don't pray right. Right? Right? If you're going to be the watchman on the wall, you got to get your head right. To get your head right, you start following and follow what the Lord said. This is how you pray. Figure out who your daddy is, what he can do, and then start remembering what is in his name. Benefit number two. Spiritfulness of the Holy Spirit. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah is peace. Jehovah Shema. Jehovah is there. So I have peace. And wherever I am, God is with me. <coughs> Hallowed be thy name. Lord, I thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, I thank you that even though I feel like I'm in the middle of the desert, you're right here with me. Lord, I thank you that in your name you prepared a, a, a feast for me in the middle of my enemies. Lord, uh, forgive my wicked ways. Lord, come and, and purify, sanctify, God. You're worthy to be praised tonight. Lord, I lift up and magnify your holy name. I honor you tonight. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. Lord, come and have your way tonight. Did you not feel that portal of heaven start to open? Did he do it just because he was preacher doing it? Or he do it because he's honoring his word? You see what I'm saying? I've got just a few more minutes. Jehovah, benefit three, soundness, health, and healing. Jehovah Rapha, you've heard me say that one many times tonight. It's close to my heart. Jehovah, my healer. I remember your name. You're the God that heals. You healed me. <laughs> By your stripes I was healed. Past tense, already finished. Lord, I thank you that in your name there is healing physically, spiritually, emotionally. Hallowed be thy name, Jehovah Rapha. No, D, benefit for success. Freedom from the curse. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, my provider. Oh, you're cursed with a curse. Now I'm blood bought. I'm a king's kid. I've been, I, I've been set aside. I've got a new DNA. Oh, behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm a new creature in Christ. Come on. It's Jehovah. Jireh is my provider. Well, don't you know what you did? Don't you know what Jesus did for me? Amen. Hallowed be thy name, Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you told me not to think about what to wear, what to eat. Uh, Lord, you said you would you would take care of those things. Uh, Lord, Lord, you said that through doing them this power, you would provide. Uh, you would give us influence of riches and wealth. Lord, we thank you tonight that you're Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. <laughs> Benefit number five. Security, freedom from the fear of death and hell. I mean, oh, uh, you're going to die someday, but you don't have to die forever if you make Jesus Lord of your life. Some people are going to die twice. You only got to die once and get to live forever. Jehovah, I always get this one wrong. Jehovah Raha, Je Jehovah my shepherd. 
Jehovah Nisi. I've been saying this from Jehovah my banner. Anytime the enemy brings something up, he brings out his war banner. He, his banner over me is love. His banner over me, he says he has many different types of banner that he says about me and he says over me. <laughs> and, and, and anytime that uh, when, when, when I'm dead and gone, don't cry for me because I, I will be celebrating with my Lord forevermore. I get to promote it to heaven. I'll be preparing a place for every soul I've ever witnessed to. Everyone I've ever led to Jesus, I'll be making a way for them to come and celebrate with my Lord with me. Don't be sad for me because I will be in a better place. Uh, I will be in a place that people have dreamed about going to and I will be happy. <laughs> you may be sad, but you don't have to stay sad if you realize who your God is and what happens to that name because then you would get to see me again someday. Because he's Jehovah Nisi. Hallowed be thy name. You never knew that just so two short verses could have so much power in them, did you? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I pray even as this week, as you go, we're, we're going we're to end there tonight. Where I, but I pray that this week, that as you go, uh, that that resonates in your spirit and you start marinating in that as you start talking to Jesus more. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Woo. Daddy, I love you. Lord, thank you. You're my Father. Mm. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Woo! Glory. I praise you tonight, Jesus. See, when you do that, you can feel the portal of heaven start to open. And, and it's coming down right now. Angels are descending and ascending in the room. Why? Because we're doing it his way. We didn't show up with our laundry list. We showed up with a thankful heart. It was a grateful heart. Praising him for what he's already done. You don't even have to make it up. You don't even deserve what he's already did. <laughs> Isn't that good news? So now you know what we're going to be on for the next few weeks. I don't know. It shouldn't take that long to go through this. But uh, <laughs> but this is what the Lord told me tonight. It's, it's on the way in. Matter of fact, I prayed and studied up and he said, I want you to continue this. And it ties in on everything he's had me preaching on and that and how many are ready to start really taking some things by force? Amen. How many are really ready? You know, well, listen, I'm just as happy as you that he shows up tonight. tonight. I'm so happy that you felt him. It, how, how sad would it be to be teaching about the power of prayer and me be, be, be invoking the word of God and not feel nothing? I never want that to be that way. The spirit, the, the letter killeth, but the spirit give life. It's never enough to learn about it. It should, it should, it should ignite fire in you. It should make you, when you leave here tonight, man, I want to go home and practice praying this week. I want, to, I want to get in and shake heaven. I want to get a portal open over my house. Amen. 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 And you can, and he will. You may have to turn the TV off. You may have to turn Facebook off for a minute. Hey, I have to. I, I tell you what, if we weren't doing that new business and all that stuff here lately, I'm just ready to turn the whole thing off for a while. But right now I'm kind of have to stay connected, but I'm just ready to shut the whole thing off for a while and I'm ready to go back to the 1940s or something and just send smoke signals, you know. <laughs> Actually, if you want to talk to me, talk to me in person. It'll be much better for both of us. Which brings me to one other thing in closing that has nothing to do with tonight's teaching other than if you try to reach me and you can't get a hold of me, AT&T has my phone completely messed up. Even today, Brother Todd called me two or three times and I, if I hadn't looked down and seen I had missed calls, I'd never even known he called. My phone's quit taking voicemails. It's quit ringing when people call me. It's quit, as a pastor, that's kind of a big deal. And I've got to get it fixed and I've been, I've tried everything with them and if you've ever dealt with AT&T, you know that it's lots of prayer and it's, I'm, 
I'm working on it, okay? So don't be upset with me. It is. It's it, it, you gotta be prayed up. <laughs> but so don't be offended if I don't take your call or if there's no voicemail. It's not intentional, and I may not even know you ever called me. Send a text message, say, 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 hey pastor, I need to talk to you. And sometimes they don't even get through right now. But try something. If all else fails, call Pastor Tammy. Her phone still works. I'm not ignoring you. Thought I should make a public announcement. And a lot of more business of Jehovah's Diver reading from the curse. <laughs> yeah, freedom from the curse. Even, even at and <laughs> I think I got my record for being on hold with them. I think it was like, I don't know, it was 12 or 14 hours in the time. My one before that was eight hours. <coughs> All right. Deacon, if you want to grab the microphone, it's five till. Rebecca's already got her hand up. Tell me what you're taking away from tonight. And, and you know, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed tonight. Tonight was fun. And, uh, the Lord was in it, and I'm excited about I'm excited about a praying church. Amen. Not that y'all haven't been praying, but I'm excited about our house praying church. Um, you have to get rid of distractions and pray, and every move of God started with prayer. Amen. Heather's got her hand up. Um, dig out your cistern to get your channel tuned in right but one thing I learned is I did not know he had many banners of what he says about you I didn't know there was many yeah yeah sister Bob and you guys can always ask me questions too I always forget to say that sometimes I feel like people are like I'm afraid to ask you questions as many times as I've, you know, used that, the Lord's Prayer is my guide. I just never thought about it. that much focus on the different names and what they provide. Yeah, yeah. And just think when you pray that, the power that comes with it. Yeah. Every big move of God starts with prayer, and you, um, you got to know that God sees you. And, um, uh, Good stuff, man. Amen. The young man in the back there, Robert. <coughs> I learned that um, when I come tonight, when I come every night, whatever night it may be, I'm taking advantage of being in the house of God and I'm going deeper uh, in the Word, as deep as I can go, because this is the time we have here. Uh, and I'm taking advantage of that, to be honest with you. I'm a little bit gone because I'm getting in so much that I am receiving more. That's what I'm getting tonight. I'm going to do more of that. That's what I, it's kind of what I learned a little bit to do more of today. Amen. Thank you. Sister Rebecca. One thing God is bound by in His Word. That's why we pray the Word of God. Amen. I remember when I first taught that at Broken Chains, I had a lot of people upset with me, and then I seen a lot of people lives change because they started applying that, and because a lot of times we pray our emotions or our opinions. And God's not bound by our emotions, our opinions. He's bound by His Word. And but it doesn't come naturally to us all the time. You're, some people are like, "Well, you told me to talk to him like he was my best friend." Yes, you talk to him like that. But when it's time to make the petition, <coughs> make the petition backed by the Word of God. You can tell him how you feel. You can tell him what's going on. You can talk to him just like your best friend. Well, I, and if you don't know all the words, just start with some of it. And uh, 
I gave one to somebody and I gave one to every member of the church years ago. And maybe I'll do it again during this season. When I was first come to God, I got my hands on something called a Bible promise book. Anybody ever seen one of those? Anybody remember when I gave those out? And so, you know, one of the things I dealt with, I know none of you dealt with this, was something called anger. And the Lord had tons of prayers in there about anger. Or if I had a problem with, if I needed food, finances, whatever, there every promise the Bible has, it doesn't have ever all of them, but it's a thick book. It, you know, it was pretty good for a guy that didn't know nothing. And it sure helped me start to pray the Word of God. And so if you don't know, get a hold of the Bible promise book, get you one of them, and just start when you have, as you're talking to God, go through there, find you a promise that lines up with what you're needing from God, and start praying that way. <coughs> Amen? Yes. It works. Anybody else tonight? Brother Don. It's a privilege to be able to call God our Father. I mean, it's, think of the price that he paid. He gave up his son. His son shed his blood so that we could call him Father. Amen. So it's not, you know, we were adopted, but there was a price for that. Oh, it's yeah. It's like if you adopt a child, you don't just, they don't just drop them at your doorstep. You know, you've got to prepare, you got to, actually pay money too right, you know, right. Lots you pay to be the parent of that child and same thing with god he's he's paid a price you know for us to, to be his kids and uh, it's not something we should take lightly exactly yeah uh, you know and what all that went through i, I kind of went over that a little fast and i i thought of it so much but you know when you think about what jesus did on the cross for you you know, that our Father who art in heaven. And Jesus, you know, he, he had a choice. And if there had been any other way as a human, he would have rather done it. But you, you guys have heard me lead hundreds if not thousands to the Lord, and you always hear me say, uh, when you went to the cross, you had me on your mind. Because I truly believe that as the Son of God, he had each one of us on his mind, and he knew exactly what he was doing. And he did that so that we could call him father Amen. you know and when we honor that he said each time that you do this taking communion I skipped over that in my notes but uh, yeah, so, so each time we take communion he said each time you remember this body you remember this blood and you know as you enter into heaven we need to spend that time doing that Amen. Sister Bob. Many, 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 many years ago, <laughs> um, when I was working at Horseman, I had a supervisor that hated me because it, we were coming into the age of computers. She didn't understand it. She was older. She didn't want to learn it. And she resented the fact that I understood it. And I mean, she made working there horrible for me. People that didn't even work in my unit saw it. And God gave me a scripture in Proverbs. It says, you look hard at the place where your enemy was and they are there no more. And there was another one that said, promotion doesn't come from the east to the west. And God lifts up one and puts down another. So I said, God, she's at a point where she's not comfortable here. I said, just let her retire. I want to be promoted. And she retired and I got her job. And she was much happier. It's so funny. <laughs> God's scale is even and his yeah. way is just. I didn't wish anything evil on <laughs> Yeah. Amen. God will give us the word for each yeah. occasion. Robert. I, I just want to say I'm humble before the Lord, before the body of Christ. I actually feel humble today. I feel like in my spirit, I'm humble. It feels good. So I just want, I just want to say that I'm very happy to be there. Sister Heather. Um, just one thing that he brought out is D or benefit where he's our success. 
uh, freedom from the curse. Um, just like my coworkers um, recently uh, just moved to a new spot, and they'll say, so like when somebody says, um, bless you for when you sneeze, they change it because they're against religion, but they'll say, I curse you. No, I curse you and all that stuff. But, oh, but now I can say, well, they don't say it to me because I won't receive it, but yeah. I'll say, oh, no, uh, freedom from the curse. I am blessed. Uh, yeah. Sister Rebecca. Um, I like when they, when you mentioned Hannah, that she was persistent in prayer, because Eli the priest thought she was drunk, because she wasn't speaking out the words, but she was speaking, her mouth was moving, but she was, you know, praying silently, and she kept persistent, God answered her prayer, and she got a son, Samuel. Um... You're thinking of the wrong one, yeah. Uh, Luke two thirty seven. She was a widow of about four score and four years, which parted not from the temple to serve God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she was praying to see the Messiah, and she was uh Hannah. Yeah. Yes, that's Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was... Hannah. Back to the wife. Right. Sorry, I said that I put a mage on it, but it's, <laughs> I, did, I, I quoted Luke 2 37 when I gave it, so I had the right thing. She persisted. Uh, to see, so. Anybody else tonight? No one wants? We're, we're going to continue next week on this prayer outline, so keep it. Or, Turn it in, whichever one you want to do, but don't don't lose it. We've, we've typed it up fresh. Uh, this was from me back before the, even the digital age, so uh, it, I, I did it uh, 25 years ago, maybe? 20, I don't know, something like that, probably. Uh, how many remember the first time I taught you this over 15 years ago? It was one of the very first things I think I taught Broken Chains Church on our Tuesday night prayer meetings on how to pray. And uh, I just felt like God wanted us to go over it again. So uh, we'll be doing that. Sister Heather. Sister, I, this could be a sister story. Um, when I was younger, I would always pray for people that were sick. Because when I first got this, I would use to pray with this outline. <laughs> but then God released me from that. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. Every morning. We'll, go well, he got you praying. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Thinking that you'll come take prayer requests. Uh, thank you all so much for coming this evening. We'll see you Sunday morning, bright and early. Come early. We'll buy you breakfast. <laughs> then uh, Wednesday, and then. Thursday starts our car parking, so come support your church. <laughs>